is one through nine. Proverbs 31, verses one through nine. I read from the New King James Version of the Holy Bible. And it reads, The words of King Lemuel, the utterance which his mother taught him. What, my son, and what, son of my womb, and what, son of my vow, do not give your strength to women, nor your ways to that which destroys kings. It is not for the kings, O Lemuel, it is not for the kings to drink wine, nor the princes intoxicating drink, lest they drink and forget the law, and pervert the justice of all the afflicted. Give strong drink to him who is perishing, and wine to those who are bitter of heart. Let him drink and forget his poverty and remember his misery no more. Open your mouth for the speechless in the cause of all who are appointed to die. Open your mouth, judge righteously, and plead the cause of the poor and needy. I want to talk to us this morning from a very simple subject and it is titled Listen to Your Mother. I want to talk to us from a very simple subject, Listen to Your Mother. This sermon is the second in a series of sermons that we started last week. Last week, we preached the first sermon in the series, and it was titled, Discover Your Father's Heart. And today, we preached the second sermon in the series, and it is titled, Listen to Your Mother. <coughs> if you have a living mother, surely you are blessed. And the word of God for you today is listen to your mother. And then if you have a mother who has gone on to glory, perhaps your mother is not living today, the word of God is still for you. And the word of God in this case would be remember your mother's words. Listen to your mother. This series of sermons are titled Charity Begins at Home. Charity Begins at Home. And the idea is that charity or love emanates first of all from our heavenly home. It starts in our heavenly home. And then in the realm of time and the physical, it begins from in our family home. Charity begins at home. It is the desire of God while we go out seeking to do all sorts of wonderful things in the world and even in the church to remember that charity begins at home. It makes no sense for you to talk about your great righteousness when there is no charity or no law in your own home. It is kind of hard and vain for you to talk about how much 
You love the Lord whom you have never seen, but you despise the wife of your youth. You talk about God and your great God for him, but have little respect for your husband in the house. It makes no sense, and indeed it is vain for us to go forth talking about all the evils in the world. If we first, we fail to first extend the love of God to our own children. Church, help me preach this word by telling your neighbor, charity begins at home. Charity begins at home. And for good measure, tell them as well, listen to your mother. Listen to your mother. If your mother has gone off to glory, then remember her words. Charity begins at home. Solomon is the author of the Proverbs. And the Bible lets us know about Solomon that he was the wisest man in the world. In fact, let me read to you what the Bible says about the great wisdom of Solomon. In 1 Kings chapter 4, verses 29 through 34, it says, And God gave Solomon wisdom, an exceedingly great understanding, a largeness of heart like the sand of the seashore. Thus Solomon's wisdom excelled the wisdom of all the men of the east and all the wisdom of Egypt. For he was wiser than all men, than Ethan the Ezrahite, and Heman and Chalcol and Darka the sons of Mahor, and his fame was in all the surrounding nations. He spoke 3,000 proverbs, and his songs were 1,005. When we talk about Solomon, most of us remember him for his great wealth and his great wisdom. But few of us will remember that Solomon was also a great psalmist. Solomon was a great writer of songs. The Bible says he wrote 1,005. Solomon was a man of great wisdom. And he was the author of the book of Proverbs. Bible scholars believe that some of Solomon's writings in the Proverbs were autobiographical in nature. In other words, that Solomon was writing about his own life. But when he wrote about his own life, he chose not to use his own name. Solomon referred to himself when he wrote concerning himself as Lemuel. He referred to himself as Lemuel and here in Proverbs chapter 31. The Bible says the king, the words of King Lemuel, the utterance which his mother taught him. Solomon was the son of King David and Bathsheba, the wife of Uri. She was the woman whom David had taken from her husband's home. And she bore him a son, and his name was Solomon. God is so great that even in the midst of that broken and uh, terrible relationship, God raised up a son and took the son of Bathsheba and David and placed them on the throne of Israel. Church, God doesn't always do what you think he's going to do. Because God is not a man like us. 
God does not think like us. If it would have been you or me, Solomon would never have smelled the throne of Israel. But thank God that we serve with God, who can look beyond the faults of men and bless them greatly, of which you and I are testimonies today. Many times I think about my own life, and I thank God for every member of this church. Who am I that God would lift me up from the depths of sin and raise me up to be a preacher of His Word? God knows how to look beyond the faults of our lives the cracks in our vessels yes. and use us for his glory. Solomon receives these words of wisdom from his mother, Bathsheba. He writes them down in the Proverbs, just so you know. A proverb is a truism. It is a truth that obtains in the normal course of events. It is a truth that obtains all things being equal. It is not a truth in every circumstance or every single instance. It allows for occasional and rare exceptions in abnormal circumstances. So when you read the book of Proverbs, do not think for a moment that the Proverbs are presenting to you truths that apply every time. They are simply presenting to you words of wisdom that apply in the normal course of events. But also bear in mind that in spite of the fact that they occur in normal course of events, that God always retains the right to intervene and change the normal course of things. That's what we call a miracle. A miracle occurs when God intervenes to change the course of the normal uh, in his own power and wisdom. In the Bible, most of the Proverbs were written by this man whose name was Solomon. The Proverbs were uh, an expression of time-tested wisdom. Under normal circumstances, pay attention to the Proverbs because under normal circumstances, 99 times out of 100, what they are telling you will be true. Amen. 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 Often, they are expressions of wisdom passed down from a father to a son. But in this particular problem, we see the expression of wisdom passed down from a mother to her son. Church, there are many truths that this mother, Bathsheba, this great woman of God, who entered into the consciousness uh, of the Bible writers, first of all because of an act of, an act of sin. This woman, who many may have condemned as a sinner, became a woman whose words we are worthy of record, even in the sacred scriptures. I want to encourage a mother today. Maybe you didn't start off as well as you had hoped. Maybe things didn't start off as you had intended them to be. Or maybe as a mother, you can look back on your life and you can see many failures. I want you to know that like Bathsheba, that God knows how to 
change the trajectory of your life. Bathsheba, because of her sin, we did. Her first child died. Her first child lost his life because of her own sin we did. But Bathsheba repented of her sin in her heart. And the God of heaven smiled upon that broken mother. He gave her another son and allowed her son to sit on the throne of Israel. There were many women in Israel who considered themselves better than their children. But Solomon, her son, ruled over them because of the grace of God. But she was transformed. Our wisdom was recorded in the sacred scriptures for all of us to read and for us to learn from. Let me share three thoughts from this wisdom of Bathsheba that all of us will hear. And let it be a clarion call to each and every one of us today. Listen to your mother. If your mother has gone on to be with the Lord, then remember her words, let them ring in your ear. Because God chose by his own sovereign will the vessel through whom you would come into this world. God by his own sovereign will appointed you to motherhood. Sometimes by birth, sometimes by other means. But know today that a mother has been provided in your life to give you something that nobody else can. And in this passage of scripture, Bathsheba pulls her son to her and she declares to him words of wisdom. These are the words that she spoke to her, to him, after he was sitting on the throne. Solomon had the blessing, even while he was king, of a woman who spoke to him. He wrote it down. I read the words of a wise person. Listen to what he said. He said, listen to your mother. Listen to your sister. Listen to your wife. The women in your life. What measure of the strength of a man is his openness to the strength of a woman. The women who listen to and respect the women in their life, he says, they are the strongest men in the world. Are y'all listening to me? Yes. You women have to say amen. amen. You women have to say amen again. Yes. Amen. But she may have words of wisdom for her son Solomon. And one thing she told him, or let me put the points like this, he declared he find out from her words of wisdom to him that mothers understand the demands of women. Mothers, they understand the demand, the design, the nature of women more than men and even more than fathers do. Listen to what that Sheba told her son the king. She said, what, my son? And what son of my womb? And what son of my vows? Do not give your strength to women, nor your ways to that which destroys kings. But Sheba, in verse 2, she is talking about the fact that she has experience about womanhood. She can give him advice about women because she's a woman herself. And she affirms and reaffirms it. She says you are the king, but in verse 2 you are my son. You are the king, but you are the son of my own womb. You are the king, but you are the son of my vows. 
world. I carried you in my womb. The only person who knows you better than I is God himself. She said, I can speak to your heart. I'm a woman, my son, listen to me. Mothers, understand the demands of, of women. And she understood that her experience gives her discernment because she's experienced as a woman herself. She's able to discern things when they relate to other women. But then she goes on to tell him something particularly powerful. She says to him that excess, as far as women will are concerned, will lead to destruction. She told her son, do not give your strength to women. He didn't say, she didn't say, do not give your strength to a woman. But she said, do not give your strength to women. The idea is that do not disperse your strength with many women. Because excess will lead to destruction. I don't know what young man I'm talking to today. I don't know if there's an old man in the church today that needs to be reminded of the words of his father. I experienced their hard discernment. And she said to him that it does it relates to women that excess brings destruction. She told her son, do not give your strength to women, nor your ways to that which destroys kings. Be careful how you begin to indulge yourself with women everywhere because the end of it is destruction in your life. Mothers understand in a very unique way the demands of women. So young men at home, turn to your neighbor and take their hand and say to them, listen to your mother. <laughs> if she's gone on to glory, remember our words. Amen. Mothers understand the demands for women. Don't dismiss the women in your life. Don't dismiss your mother. Don't dismiss your father. We know that we live in what people call a man's wall. But pay attention. You know, I've told you before, a man who doesn't listen to his wife is like a covet without brains. <laughs> Y'all didn't get it. A man who does not listen to his wife is like a covet without brains. Before long, you will have an accident. the demands of women. But there's something else that mothers understand. Mothers understand the dangers of one. You know, here we are. I've got to let you step on some toes. Mothers understand the dangers of one. Listen to what this woman of God told her son who was the king. In verse 4, she says, It is not for kings, O the mule. It is not for kings to drink wine, nor for princes intoxicating drink. Lest they drink and forget the law and pervert the justice of all the afflicted. She said, give strong drink to him who is perishing 
and wine to those who are bitter of heart. Let him drink and forget his poverty and remember his misery no more. Mothers understand the dangers of wine. Should I tell you why they understand it better than men? Because many times when wine has had its way with men, women are the ones who suffer for it. When men have indulged themselves in wine, talking about how they can handle their liquor, usually at the end, it is the woman who is on the receiving end of the suffering. So when the woman tells you something about wine, she knows what she's talking about. She understands the dangers of wine. She says two things about wine that I, I want listening to. She says, first of all, that alcohol hinders reasoning. See what it says? She said, it is not for kings to drink wine, nor for princes intoxicated drink. Why? Lest they drink and forget the law and pervert the justice of all the afflicted. She said, when you drink, that alcohol has a way of him, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. Did you know that there's a reason why alcohol is called a spirit? <laughs> it is called a spirit because a spirit is anything that has the capacity to control your mind. Alcohol is called a spirit because it has the capacity to control the mind. And usually when it controls the mind, it keeps that reasoning. I've never seen alcohol that improves the way anybody thinks. <laughs> Amen. There was a drunk at once, brother, please. The drunk was walking down the street. And when he was walking down the street, he came up to somebody and he came up to the man. He said, how can I get to the other side of the street? And the man looked at him and he said, well, if you just cross the road and you go over there, you will be on the other side. Then he staggered across the road to the other side of the street. Then he went to the first person he saw. And he asked him, he said, how can I get to the other side of the street? And then the, the person looked at him. He said, you just came from the other side. And you know what the drunk man did? He turned and he looked at the man and said, why don't you all just make up your mind?
pizza egg at night. <laughs> it will help your stomach. And it will keep you from many bad dreams. Have you ever eaten late at night and you had the worst dream of your life? It happens. Be careful. Because all that alcohol does is it hinders wisdom. And though when we indulge in it, we make of all of these reasons why we're drinking, but they're not really the reason. Let me tell you why. The reason we do it is because it has power over us. I said the reason we do it is because it has power over us. It is a spirit. And it has power over us. We know that if we keep doing it, it will lead us eventually to where we don't want to go. And this mother, perhaps she had seen, she had been on the receiving end of alcohol and its dangers. So she told her son, stay away from alcohol because he think that's wisdom. Then she went on to explain something to him. She said, alcohol will not only think that wisdom, but alcohol. It masks reality. It hides reality. Listen to what this wise woman told her son about alcohol. In verse 5, she says, or verse 6, she said, Give strong drink to him who is perishing, and wine to those who are bitter of heart. Why? Listen. She said, Let him drink and forget his what? And remember his misery no more. Alcohol does not change the reality. All it does is it hides the reality. The one who is perishing is still perishing. The only thing that the strong drink does is that it hides it from his sight. The one who is struggling, the one who is in misery, is still in misery. All the drink does is it takes away and causes him to forget his misery. This wise woman told her son, because of her understanding of the dangers of wine, that alcohol keep that reasoning. And alcohol hides reality. Someone said, I can control it, I can stop every time, any time I want. And then he turned around and looked. He said, I've talked 20 times this month. You know, I don't believe it. He said, I can't control it. Alcohol don't control me, but I have stopped 20 times this month already. It's like the drug addict. We say, there ain't no problem. Every day talks about quitting drugs, but he can't quit drugs because the truth of the matter is that drugs are his spirit. And they control the mind. And so this woman tells us, she understands the dangers of mind. She said, my son, stay away from it. It will lead you to do what you don't want to do. It will hide the reality of your situation rather than enable you to change it. She said, son, When you drink socially, alcohol has medicinal purposes. We know that, don't we? Many of the medications we take control and contain alcohol in them. That's not what we are talking about. I'm not telling you don't take night wheel because it has alcohol in it. But it's talking about alcohol in its social use. The mother wants her son about the dangers of alcohol. Talk to your neighbor and help me preach and say, Pastor is working hard today. <laughs> but listen to your mother. <laughs> Amen. One other thing this woman told us, sir. The text reveals to us that mothers understand the demands of women. Mothers understand the dangers of wine. And ultimately that mothers understand the disadvantages 
of weakness. They teach us in the normal course of things how to sacrifice for others. And they teach us in the normal course of things how to sympathize with others. There's something about a woman that makes it somehow easier for her to understand sacrifice better than a man. I think it has something to do with the fact that for nine months of her life, she carries a baby in her womb. Her appearance change, changes. Her knees hurt. Her stomach hurts. Many times she has to quit her job. But her husband keeps on working. Many times the mother, even though she is pregnant, even though it is hard on her, has to stand up and cook, even though her ankles are swollen, while the man sits there on the couch <laughs> watching the NFL. Forget the sacrifices of my mother. I can never forget the sacrifices of my mother who gave up so much for me and my siblings. There's something about the mother that enables her to teach us something about sacrifice more than men. And sometimes when it is time for men to make decisions, they say, oh, get the women out of here, they are too emotional. <laughs> but I want you to know that you need to hear a woman's voice. She may be emotional, but she's like the bricks of your corvette. She will keep you from many accidents. And there is no glory in making decisions without emotions. Consider emotions and the effect of what you do, mother on others, mothers teach us to sacrifice for others. And let me also let you know that mothers teach us to sympathize with others in the normal course of things. I've met a few mothers here and there who are meaner than junkie junkie and dogs. <laughs> But remember I told you that the problem is a truism, yeah. something that is true under normal circumstances. And one thing that this mother does, she teaches her son to sacrifice for others. Look at the verse in verse 9, 8. She says, open your mouth for the speechless in the cause of all who are appointed to die. She said, those that are suffering who cannot speak for themselves. She told her son, speak up for them. I wish in America today that more of our politicians were women because if more of them were women, they would not forget about the poor. If more of them were women, they would not be trying to get rid of Medicaid and all the things that help the poor. If more of them were women, they would not be cutting programs that help children. But men can stand up and beat their chest in the name of politics and talk about things that will bring great danger to so many as if they have no heart. But a woman has a different perspective. Turn to your neighbor and say, listen to mama. She has something to say. The teach us to sacrifice for others. But they also teach us to sympathize with others. But she told her son, 
She said, open your mouth and judge righteously and plead the cause of the poor and the needy. She said, my son, you are the king and now you are sitting on the throne of all of Israel. She said that there are some people who will be around you all the time but the poor cannot come into your presence like the rich. She said, my son, have sympathy for the poor. My son, have sympathy for the needy. My son, remember them. I think there's a reason why women are specially positioned to talk about weakness. Because we live in this world that is often called a man's world. And women are often tied at the bottom of the totem pole as men seek to dominate in the war. But because of that, God has given women a peculiar ministry, the ability to identify with the weak and with the low. All I'm trying to tell somebody is listen to your mother. If your mother has gone on to glory, then remember the words that she spoke to you. Solomon wrote down what his mother had told him. Solomon was the wisest man in the entire world. But one thing about Solomon, even though he wrote what Mama said, Solomon didn't always do what Mama said. For the Bible says about Solomon, in 1 Kings chapter 11 and verses 1 to 4, it says, But Solomon loved many foreign women from the nations of whom the Lord had said to the children of Israel, You shall not intermarry with them, nor they with you. Surely they will turn away your heart after their gods. But Solomon clung to these women in love. And he had 700 wives, princesses, and 300 concubines. And his wives turned away his heart. For it was so. When Solomon was old, that his wife stuck his heart after other gods, and his heart was not loyal to the Lord his God, as was the heart of his father David. Solomon wrote down the Proverbs for us, but how I wish that Solomon would have listened to Mama. But when it came to the issue of women, Solomon went off in the wrong direction. And it cost Solomon dearly. Church, I want you to know that God has by his own hand chosen your mother. God has by his own hand chosen your wife. Listen to your mother. Listen to your wife. I didn't tell her you to let her rob your house. But I told you to humble yourself and listen. Yeah, yeah. Lest destruction will come upon you in life. Your mother is a gift from God. But even more than your mother, there is another gift. And that gift is the gift of Christ. The greatest gift of all is the gift of Christ. Mother was the first vessel through whom you came into life. But Jesus is the second vessel through whom you have received everlasting life. Listen to 
your mother and listen to Jesus Christ. Listen to him and give your life to him. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that who should not believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Children, be careful when mother tells you that she does not like that friend you are running with. Don't be foolish and think you are wiser than your mother because your friends may bring destruction to your life. There are many children today lying in an early grave because the people they thought were their friends were the same ones who took their life. Be careful how you dismiss your mother's words when she tells you about the company you keep. Remember your mother's words when she tells you that you ought to keep Jesus as your friend. He says, what a friend? We have in Jesus. He says, all our sins and our needs to bear. Listen to your mother. Jesus, the gift of God, came into the world and he died for your sins and rose from the dead. And he's coming back to judge this world. He lives forevermore. Let the church say amen. Let me close by just telling you a day